What up, Algebra Squad? Welcome to Module 3, our new module. Now, this one is going to be super, super simple uh, because pretty much all the math that we've done already, it's what we're going to use, all right? Uh, nothing crazy new. This lesson is about graphing linear functions. More specifically, graphing linear functions. And remember, duh, linear means line. And function just means that it passes a vertical line test, right? So if you do a vertical line test, um, it's you're not going to touch the function more than once because it's, well, a line. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, this lesson specifically, uh, this piece right now, it's graphing it by making a table. Now, what am I talking about when I say making a table? This is called a table or called a table, table of values. So if you listen to, if you hear the words table of value or table, it means the same thing. Table of values is uh, pretty much where we have our X and our Y, meaning our um, domain and range, right? Our X is domain, Y is range. And that's pretty much as simple as it is. What we want to do right now is we're going to be using the blueprint. I want I want to call this the blueprint, even though, even though it's called the equation or the function. We're going to use the equation, the blueprint, to generate points, right? So this right here um, represents infinite amount of points and just to kind of explain to you what i'm talking about let me go ahead and put it on decimals really quick so you could see uh the equation that we're working with negative 2x minus 3 equals y and i, I do want to remind you guys from last module that we don't have any exponents uh, in the X or in the Y that's greater than one, right? Because if we have an exponent that's greater than one, that is when we now have nonlinear. That is when it's curved, right? So we're going to go ahead and take the exponent out and we're going to go ahead and reassure ourselves that these are linear functions because none of these equations that we're working with, you can look at your whole entire worksheet. None of these variables have an exponent greater than one. So uh, I can zoom out as much as I want to. This is an infinite amount of zooming that I can do. And I just want to let you know that this right here is the blueprint that represents all these infinite billions and trillions. I don't even want to say billions and trillions because that the word infinite means forever, never ending. OK, um, the truth is, if uh, it's crazy that if you were to sit here and try to uh, name all the points that exist to make this line, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to. Your lifetime doesn't is not enough. There are not, not enough lifetimes for you to uh, be able to count how many points make this line. All right. So um, what exactly are we doing? Well, we're going to be generating inputs where, or, or thinking about X numbers, random X numbers. So, for example, um, the number negative 1.5 gives me zero. Hmm. Is that true? Let's go ahead and see what I'm talking about. Um, we can decide what numbers we put here. So I'm going to put the number negative 1.5. Was that the number we were working with? Yeah, negative 1.5. So let me see if, if this blueprint is true. What happens if I input, meaning if I make, by the way, what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to turn this around where my Y is on the left side. So Y equals negative 2X minus 3. A lot of the times we like to see it like this, where Y is on the left side and then the entire rest of the function or equation is on the other side. Why do we like to see it like that? Because when we're using inputs, Remember that we use um, function notation. It's kind of easier to tell the story of what we're doing. We are inputting a negative 1.5 everywhere that we see an X. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 1.5 minus 3. Okay. Now let's see what this is going to be equals to. I'm just going to just let the calculator do everything for us. But remember to use PEMDAS. You first need to do 2 negative times a 1.5 negative. That's going to give you 3. OK, and then we're going to take three away from that. Look what we get. We get zero. So when we have an input, when we input into the function of uh, a negative one point five, we get zero. And that is exactly what we saw on that um, in that graph. So I'm going to go ahead and, and plot that because we are graphing it using the table. So I'm going to go uh, one to the left and half. So that's going to be one and a half comma zero. That's that point right there. OK. Now, I, I want to get out of working with decimals. I'm the one. We are the ones that orchestrate what numbers we input. So get out of decimals, get out of ugly numbers. Let's try to get easy numbers. So let's pick another number. What about an easy number? What is one of the easiest numbers to work with? One or zero, right? So let's go ahead and see what zero looks like. Um, let's do F of zero. 
f of 0 would mean that we're going to be doing negative 2 times 0, which is nothing, and then take away 3. Hopefully you see that nothing minus 3 is going to give you negative 3. Right? So that's my output. That's my output. We get an output of negative 3. So at 0x, I have to go down with my y, 3. 1, 2, 3. There we go. Now, this is the perfect time to kind of bring this up. Hopefully you see that the more points that we come up with, the more X's and Y's, domains and ranges that we come up with, the better picture we get to see here. It's almost like when somebody's drawing a sketch of, uh, of whatever it is. Uh, when you're sitting next to somebody that likes to doodle or draw a sketch, um, you first start to, you know, you see like the very first few seconds and you don't understand what the heck they're drawing. But then after you give it a little bit more time, you just go, oh, okay, I get it. Now they're adding more detail that they're putting, uh, if they're trying like a face, the nose, the ears, the mouth, and you start to understand what it's what it's looking like. That is exactly what this is. The more points we add, the more we understand the picture and what it looks like. Now, I know for a fact this is a line. Because we are learning about lines. And, and let me just stop you right here. To make a line, fun fact, to make a line, you only need two points. So I could actually just stop now and grab um, a ruler or any straight edge and just connect these two points and I'd be done. That's it. I'd be done. But just for the sake of this video and for um, making our line a little bit prettier and a little bit more full, let's go ahead and put more points. Let's go ahead and put the number... Uh, input the number one. So F of one. And I do encourage you guys um, in a little bit to start putting whatever points, other points you want, just so, so you can see that it's going to land on that same line. Um, let me, uh, let me just do this really quick. Negative two times one is negative two, negative two minus three. Remember that's a negative two. And now you have a negative three. They team up to make negative five. So at one, I have to go down to negative five. And it makes sense because here, if I want to keep making this line uh, looking like it's following the pattern, I need to land somewhere around here. So negative one, one, I'm sorry, positive one, one, two, three, four, five. Here it is. And just to go ahead and check our work, um, I've taught you guys how to use decimals and how to play around with decimals. It's super, super simple. Um, let's see what happens at one. Come on. Eek. There it is. Oh, almost had it. I know you saw it. Come on. Don't be shy. It's because I'm not using the mouse. I'm using the, the trackpad. There it is. All right. So that point exists on that line. Okay. Um. So let's go ahead and do just... Let's do one more, but this one, even though, even though you might think I'm going to put the number two, I don't want to go this way. I, I've already kind of gotten enough information down here. Let me get some information up here. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit more random. I'm not going to go find this very next one. I want to find a point. Uh, and, and if I kind of guesstimate, the point is going to be somewhere around here, right? So I want to find a point somewhere there. That gives me, um, that means I need to input uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to input a negative six. So I want to see where this, what this is looking like at negative six. So now you start to understand all the freedom that you have to do this. This is pretty much you. A lot of the times, um, whoa, what am I doing here? A lot of the times when we're doing math, you guys just like are following something and you're like, oh, you know, let me just follow the steps that I'm taught. Let me just follow these steps. This is like just free for all right here. You kind of do your thing. You paint your own pictures and you decide how to make the best out of it with what you got. So negative two times negative six is a positive 12. Positive 12, take away 3. That's going to take us to 9. So here, let me just make sure that was negative 6. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so negative 6 and then up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh, I was out of my uh, little region, but I knew it was somewhere around there. So when my input was negative 6, my output was 9. Cool. Let me take this out. And now, um, if I haven't already remembered, remind me to give you guys rulers. I have some in the closet. Try to do the best. Try to be as accurate as possible. You want to be as accurate as possible because 
if you want to keep adding points to it, um, it needs to be a very, very, very good line. And now that's it. We're done. This is all there is to this part right here. So uh, what I want you to do right now is I want you to um, pause the video and create your table of values. And I want you to create about three to four points on your own. And then go ahead and resume the video and see if your line and my line looks the same. Remember, we might not be choosing the same numbers, but our line should look the same afterwards. Um, feel free to have Desmos on a different tab in case you want to check your work. All right, pause it. All right, let's do this thing. Um, let's go ahead and test. I'm going to test some numbers in the negative side and some numbers on the positive side. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you guys realize that these are counting by twos. If you didn't realize that these are counting by twos, so if you put the number one, that means you're working right here in the middle. Okay, so if, if you put a, a one as your X, that means you're working right there. So that's that's where I'm going to start. Um, Actually, look what I'm going to do. I'm not going to start there. By the way, I'm not going to start there. I'm going to make the work easier for me. Like I told you before, this is a free for all. You do you. You are the author of this, this image right here that we're creating. These are counting by twos. So why don't I make this easier on myself and just kind of ask myself, okay, well, let me see what happens at negative eight. Maybe let's see what happens at negative four. Let's see what happens at zero. And then I'll just kind of even it out. Let's see what happens at four and then at eight, right? I did the same numbers on the left that I'm using on the right. So negative eight, negative four, zero. So I'm asking myself what's happening pretty much at the furthest left, somewhere in the middle uh, of the left side, somewhere in the middle of the middle right? The Y axis, uh, somewhere in the middle of the right. And then all the way furthest to the right. I want to see what's happening with this line where, where this line is, um, doing its thing. All right. So F of negative eight, remember you don't have to erase what you did unless you already knew you did it wrong. Um, you can also add the points that I'm, I'm adding to mine. You can add them to yours. All right, so right here, I'm going to get negative 16 when I multiply this together. Negative 16 plus 5, that's going to give me negative 11, okay? So at negative 8, I'm going to be at negative 11. At negative 8, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, I'm going to be at negative 11. Now, understand what's going to happen. Right here, this line right here is negative 10. My negative 11 should be under, under. Um. I'm just going to guesstimate it right now, but truth is, truth is, this is okay. It doesn't mean that I messed up. Oh my God, the point that I found is not on the graph. Remember that this is not a limit. This box is not a limit. This box expands forever. These lines extend forever. So I might choose not to do this one. I might go, you know what, whatever. I'm not going to do negative eight. I found it. I know where it's supposed to land. Maybe I'll plot it later. Right now, let me just move to F of negative four. The reason I'm doing this is to show you that it's okay. Do not freak out understand that um, this is life. Things happen. Uh, two times negative four is negative eight. Negative eight plus five, negative eight plus five will give me negative three. All right, negative three. I know for a fact I can put negative four comma negative three in my graph. Negative four, um, remember that I have to count by half. So that's negative two. Negative three is right here. Let's go ahead and put zero. See what happens at zero with mine. I'm I'm very, very sure you put zero as one of your points. So let's uh, just, obviously that goes away to give me five. So zero comma five, zero comma five, zero comma two, four, five is between four and six. Once again, remember what I told you in the first one, you only need two points to make a line. As, so, as long as you have two points, you can make your line and that's it. Now, it does get a little bit more accurate and a little bit prettier to make a line when you have more points to pull from. Uh, let's see what happens at F of four. I can see that this is increasing by a lot. Like it's increasing very, this, this line is up uh, when I say up, it's like very steep. It goes up very quickly versus a line that's like a little bit lower. So my four, when I put a four, it might not be in here. So I might have to choose another number. Let's see what happens. Two times four plus five equals. Two times four is already eight. And then eight plus five is going to give me 13. I am not in here. I'm not in there. Ah, huh, that's gonna get me out of there. So what I'm gonna do, and for sure, eight is gonna eight is gonna be way out of my graph right now. It does exist. 
I'm not saying they don't exist. They do exist. They're part of your graph. But with the little graph that we have right now, we won't be able to see them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep writing my own story and I'm going to be smart about it. I put the number um, the, the, the zero and I put the number four. Four was way too far. Let me just put the number two. Let me put the number two. I can do it because I can. It's mine. Ain't nobody tell me what's up. All right. Two times an input of two plus five. So it's going to be four plus five. That's going to give me nine. Ooh, I think nine is a good one. Uh, two comma nine. So we have two comma. That's eight and nine is in between. You know what? I'm just too OCD. I'm too OCD. I don't know about you guys, but I have these two points right here. I want to point somewhere around here. So I want to see what's happening at. I want to see what's happening at negative. Let's look at negative six. F of negative six. F of negative six is two times negative six, which is negative 12. And then uh, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, right? So negative seven. Uh, where am I? Right here. Let me go ahead and add that to my table of values. I inputted a negative six and got a negative seven out of it. So at negative six, I am at negative seven right here. Nice. This is pretty enough. This is beautiful. It, it looks nice and full. I have points on my left side, right? I have some points on my left side. I have a point for sure at zero. And then I have points on the right side. Good enough. Like it. Like I said before, did I need to make more than two points? No, I did not. I'm just showing you that this is as easy as doing the first two points. It doesn't hurt to get more points out of it. And there you have it. All right. Now, if you're wondering, Mr. C, can I just do two points then in the, in the quiz or in the test? I will make sure to ask you how many points I want to see. So I will tell you, make sure you show me three or four or five points. Um, just make sure you listen to the instructions. All right. Ooh, example number two, pretty much question number three. Example number two says, choose appropriate domain values. Remember that domain are your X's, right? Domain are your X's. Now, why is this saying that? Why is this saying that? This is saying that because if we look at this equation that we're working at with, this blueprint, this function, if we're looking at it, what do you notice? What's kind of throwing you off? And I hope everybody's noticing that it's a the, the fraction, right? It's a fraction. Fractions kind of suck. They do kind of suck, especially when we're trying to graph, right? I don't want to. I don't want to try to graph a um, um, a point that's three point seven nine two comma four point two two seven. Like that's disgusting. And but we do know that those points exist, right? If we if we go back to a graph, we do know that those ugly decimals exist. That's life. They exist. They're there. Um, so choose. And I'll repeat it one more time. This is yours to choose how you want to treat it. Choose appropriate domains. Use X numbers that make sense, that make it easier for us, right? So I'm going to have a blank right here. And I'm going to have to um, ask you in one second, what will make the math here easy? And you're probably going, get rid of the fraction. <laughs> yes, even though it sounds stupid and silly, the easy work is to get rid of the fraction. So what we want to choose here are numbers that will get rid of this fraction. Hopefully we all agree that the first number that we we should understand is a zero. Zero times this fraction will make it go away. Plus three is three. All right. So we know we're at zero comma three. We're right here. But OK, now what? What numbers can we put here to multiply with one fourth? Now, remember that when you're multiplying uh, a number times a fraction, um, what you're doing is um, say, say whatever number three, let's, let's do one fourth times three. You always want to put a denominator of a one. That way you can do uh, top times top, bottom times bottom. That's going to give you three times uh, one is three. And then four times one is four. Did that make the fraction go away? It did not. Okay. Now it's not wrong. You could go this route, uh, but we don't want to work with fractions, especially when we're graphing it ourselves. So what we want to do is we want to choose a number, for example, which one I'm going to do. I'm going to strategically use the number maybe 12. Why? Because once I do 1 times 12 and I get 12 and 1 times 4 and I get 4, what's 12 divided by 4? 12 divided by 4 is 3. Bada boom. And we'd be done. Now, yes, now we do have to do that 3 plus this other 3, which gives me 
uh, six. So you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, so my input was 12. Uh, and I got, sorry, 12. And when I solved it, I get six. You see that? All right. So input of 12. I get six. Now, was that was that necessary? Did, do I have enough space here to put 12 comma six? No, but now you understand it. But also you do understand that if I put this in Desmos, if I put this equation right here in Desmos, this point exists. You just don't see it right now because we don't have the graph big enough. But that point exists. So I'm gonna leave it there. That point is gonna chill. Uh, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What I am gonna do is I'm going to go, okay, well, what, um, what number can I put right here? to get something pretty out of it. Hopefully you agree with me that if I put the number four, right, essentially I'm gonna get a four divided by four, right? If you think about it, here it is. This is what you're getting. Follow the math again. If you need to uh, rewind it and watch it, rewind it and rewatch it. So that's gonna be one. One plus three gives me four. All right, so I have an input of four, gives me an output of four. All right, let's see what that looks like. Four comma four right here. Okay, <clears throat> can I stop right now and draw a line? Yes, I can. But as your teacher, I am going to find just one more point. Just one more point. Um, And, and hopefully you guys see that I want to move this way now. I, I don't want to move too much that way. I could, I could, I could. Um, I'm actually now debating it. Should I? Should I go one more point on the positive? Let's go to the number... Uh, not six, but eight. Eight should still be in here, right? It should be like, give me a seven maybe, or it give me a six, eight comma six. I think so, right? F of eight, one fourth times eight plus three. Okay, so once again, what if this was eight? That makes this eight. Eight divided by four is two. Wait, 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 what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, it's two. Eight divided by four is two. How come this doesn't look eight divided by four? Eight comma. Hmm. Did I make a silly mistake here? Oh, that's why. Boo. Um, yes, it does give me two, but then I have to add three to it, right? I'm like, what's going on? That's not gonna follow the line. It's and then that's the beauty of it that you do the math and you look at the point. It's not gonna land here because then that's not a line. It should land somewhere up here. Um, so uh this will give me two plus three, that gives me five. Right. So when I input an eight, I get five, eight comma five. So eight comma uh, six, wait, five. Hmm. I thought I was going to land a little bit more that way. My eyes were deceived. All right. Um, I already said it before. I'm going to find a negative number right now. Uh, nothing like a beautiful negative four. Let's put a negative four because that's... Um, Hopefully you're thinking ahead into the multiplication that needs to happen. And I'll show it on paper as well. Uh, the multiplication here is one times, sorry, one fourth times negative four, right? This is what's happening. So if we put a one under it, what's essentially happening is uh, that's a negative four. And that's just four, which just makes us a negative one. A negative one, when we add three to it, gives us a positive two. Done. Okay. In putting a negative four, we get a negative one. Let me erase this and get it out of the way. Um, hopefully, those of you that do have large handwriting, uh, you're doing this on a separate sheet of paper. That way, you're saving all those um, all those notes, the work, in case you need to see it. So, all right, negative four, comma negative one. Hmm. Is it me or is this is um did my four go wrong? That's gonna be four divided by four is one plus three is four. Oh it did wait. Four four. Uh so four is four. Four is four. Zero is three. Is it my eyes or this doesn't follow the perfect line? All right, which one did I mess up on? Which one did I mess up on? Let's see if you can find it. I'm pause it for a second. All right, I found my brain fart. 
Uh, I found my brain fart. Do you guys see that I put a two here, but put a negative one here? That's pretty much it. Found the brain fart. Dookie. And and it's funny because I put a negative one here, but I put it as a positive one here. Oh, my Lanta. It comes to show you guys, anybody could be making these errors, so you got to be careful. And once again, the beauty of this is that we can catch those mistakes while we're doing the work. This should look like a line. If it's not looking like a perfect line, and that's what I'm saying to be as accurate as possible, because if you're very messy and you normally look at that and go, oh, yeah, that's pretty much a line, you're going to get it wrong. All right, so make sure you're as accurate as possible. Um, you make your lines and your dots as accurate as possible to make sure they fall on the same perfect line. All right, cool. Moving on. Um, all right, you already know what's going to happen because this is a check problem. You need to go ahead and pause this sucker and try it out as much as you can. Cool, let's go ahead and check this. Check this check. Uh, I'm going to be going a little bit faster now, a little bit faster. Um, we have here a three-fifths, right? We have here a three-fifths, so... Um, What's going to look like a pretty, oh, ooh, ooh. what type of numbers will be good to uh, input here so we can get some good numbers to see on the graph? Try to avoid fractions as much as possible, right? Um, hopefully we can all agree that the zero, zero is going to be, or I'm sorry, zero will be the best one to start with. If we put zero, that's zero times three fifths, but then minus two. Don't forget, we got to do the minus two afterwards so that's going to give me a negative two right there so we have a point located at uh, zero comma negative two remember that every time that we are our x is zero that's going to be our y intercept always that's always going to be our y intercept so zero comma negative two boom that means that we have a line we have a line that's going to cross through this point so that's going that's called your y intercept it's crossing or touching the y-axis all right let's look or think of another point um um, b -b 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 three fifths. If I do it times, trying to keep it low enough, times two makes it six. Six fifths times three would make it nine. Times five would make, oh, I think five is a good one. So let's do five. So this one looks like one of those um, problems that we don't want to choose too many points. Too many points, I mean, the, we could do the math. It's okay to do the math. We're, we're going to get decimals, but it's just going to suck to graph it uh, because we want to be as, as accurate as possible. The reason why I chose five, hopefully you could see it. Um, this is what happens when we choose five. Right? So we have this uh, three times five, which will make it 15, and then 15 um, over one. So we will have, once again, we'll have 15 on the top. Five times one is five. When you divide this, right? 15 divided by five makes it three. And then now we just got to do three minus two. Three minus two is going to give us one. So when we input a five, we get one. Yeah? All right. Uh, we got five comma one, which is located at Five comma one right here, middle and middle. Something is telling me to just not do any more points in this one. I'm trying to think of what's going to give me another uh, number uh, that if I multiply by three it would be divisible by five. So uh, not 15 times four is 12 times five. Um, I already did that times five times six, mm, seven, 20 to uh, eight. Nah it would give me 24. So you know what? I'm going to stop it right here. This problem right here is asking me to just not go through any more um, X values, but this is what I am going to do. And then I need you all to do this with me. This is what I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put, um, let's go ahead and put another number. Um, let's go with the number eight. Let's go with the number eight. Three fifths times eight minus two, and and I hopefully and hopefully you understand that I am going to, um, what you call it? I'm I am going to use the calculator or decimals to show you um, where this is taking us. So um, 
pretty much if you haven't followed the pattern yet, what's going to happen is eight times three, eight times three gives us 24. So we have 24 over five. That's what's going to happen. And then minus two. Now, what exactly is 24 divided by five? 4.8, 4.8. And then if we take two away from that, we have 2.8. So we get 2.8, not too crazy of a decimal, not too crazy. So if we input an eight, we get 2.8, which should be located in eight. So this is two, right? Very close. So you can see that my line is not perfect because it went a little bit higher than this point right here. So 2.8 should be located somewhere here because halfway would be actually three. So my line is a little bit, tiny bit off. Um, so how, once again, how can you use Desmos to uh check your work to see if this is looking good what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the original equation which is y equals uh three fifths x minus two i'm going to put that and then i'm going to go try as best as possible to find where my x number is eight so that's five six seven eight eight is located right here so if i go up this line and i click to see where it's eight oh i think i had it on that first click right there there it is. Boom. My math is right. Right. So not only is that one right, but the one when we put a five at five, we had a point at five comma one. And there it is. We also had the point at zero comma negative two. And there it is. So remember that this doesn't stop. You could choose to input as many exponent um, uh, domains, X values as, as, as you want. And um, you're going to be getting, you know, your answer, your output. You put an input, you get an output, all right? Simple as that. All right, people, let's see what we have now. Example three, graph y equals a. What in the world is that? Well, y equals a means you are graphing an equation that is y equals some number. By the way, a is just some number. For example, y equals five. Hopefully we've done this uh, enough. Hopefully we've done this enough for you to understand that when we have an X equals something or a Y equals something, we are talking about, um, what you might call it? Vertical and horizontal lines. Check it out. Y equals five is located where my Y value is always five. Y equals five. Pay attention to my Y coordinate, the five. It says negative 2.72, but then it says five. Pay attention, pay attention to that five. Keep your eye on that five. What's happening? Nothing's happening to that five. All my uh, all my X values are changing because I'm moving left to right. I'm moving left to right, but is it going up and down? No. Since we're not ch uh, changing our up and down movement, our vertical movement, the five stays the same. So that is why this line is called Y equals five. If I put Y equals four, look where my line goes. It goes where Y is always four. Always, always, always four. Forever to infinity. It's always for us. I can go to forever to the right. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I can go to 12. And where is it? You don't see it because it's at 12. It's all the way up here. It's at 12. Now, hopefully we understand now that a Y equals a number. Y equals a number always makes a horizontal line. Horizontal. Uh, you're probably wondering what I'm, what I'm writing. Y equals a number makes a horizontal lines. A horizontal lines. It makes horizontal lines. Um, do we have another one right here? And you guessed it. If we have an X equals a number. So whenever you have an X equals some number, any number, does it matter? We will have the opposite of a horizontal line. Vertical lines. All right. These are great notes. So whenever you see these on your quiz, you can go find these. And I'm going to change this to an X. Look, there it is. How come this is uh, X equals 12? Because my X value of 12 will never change right now. It's always 12. All right. So it's actually very silly to um, do this. Um, what we're about to do right now. We're, we're actually going to try to make a table out of this, even though it's silly, even though it's super silly what we're about to do right now, because uh, Y equals five. If you remember what I've told you, it's where we're going where Y is five, right? So one, two, three, four, five. This is this is y equals five right here, people. Okay. So make your line. There it is. Y equals five. I'm going to write that right there right next to it. 
Um, when x is zero, what's the y? Five. When x is negative two, what's the y? Five. When x is negative seven, what's the y? Five. Okay, it sounds like I'm saying Wi-Fi. Uh, when x is two, the y is five. See, that's why it's silly. That's why I'm saying that it's silly. Um, you get it now? That's pretty much it. Um, now, I'm going to show you what the book, where, where the book takes you, which is very, 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 very silly. If you think that this was silly and, and simple, the book kind of takes it a step further and makes something imaginary. What am I talking about that the books make that the book makes something imaginary? Well, when making a table like this, you actually need input values. You need to input X's and then get Y's, you know? Um, so if you're wondering, how do I input an X if it's not there? How do you do that? Well, you technically can by putting something that is not worth anything. What? If I give you, if I reach into my pocket and take out nothing and I give it to you, did I give you anything? No, that's pretty much what we're going to do here. We're going to, to the uh, existing equation, we're going to add an X value, but this X value is going to be multiplied by zero, right? So we pretty much just added this right here. This is added. It wasn't there imaginary. So why did we do this? Because now we can actually input stuff into it. For example, we can now say f of negative 2, right? What we did over there, f of negative 2, which looks like this. 5 plus 0 times negative 2. What's going to happen if you do 0 times negative 2? It goes away. We get 0. Plus 5, it's just 5. So now you see what's going to happen. I'm just going to do this for your notes purposes. So you have this. 5 plus 0 times negative 7. This goes away. Let me just make my equals. This equals 5. Once again, we know from here. And this equals 5 again. It will forever equal 5. Hopefully you guys are understanding. If not, pause this sucker right now. Take off your headphones and raise your hand and ask me. Okay? So that's where the book takes you. The book is pretty much saying, hey, you could still do what we've been doing right here, right? By doing this. But the question is why, book? Why? Why, why, why? All right. Let's see what we have on the other side. Um, I already mentioned this one, so this should be pretty simple to get through. Um, X equals a number gives us vertical lines. So we're going to go where X is negative 2, and we're pretty much going to make a vertical line, meaning um, all the points will be on this. Oop, there we go. Perfection is required at all times. It kind of bothers me that my line is not dark enough to like make a difference here. It's kind of like which one's the y axis? It bothers me. I know. I have severe OCD. Um x and y. Okay, x and y. Um so here we have what uh, happens when my x is Oh, well, actually this is this is a little bit different. This is the other way around. Remember that my x values now is always negative two. It doesn't matter if our height or our y value is two. We're at this right here is two comma negative two. If we're up here, that means that we're at a y, we're at a height of four, negative two. All right. So it's always going to be negative two right here for our x. If we're at a height of eight all the way up here, our x is negative two. If we are at a height of negative six, which is down here, where's the point located at negative six? Right there at negative two. Okay. Um, same thing will apply here where um, we can add that phantom. Um, I'll go ahead and write it. Y or zero Y, zero Y um, equals. And, and look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take. Look what I'm going to do. This is just excessive stuff that like should not happen. It's like when you're trying to walk somewhere and you walk like in circles before you get to that place. That's exactly what's happening here. So I added the zero Y here. Um, and, and what I could do is I could pretty much take this um, Y to the other side if I wanted to by doing this, take subtracting, cancel, cancel. And now I have X is equal to negative two minus zero Y. Okay. And it could look like that. It, it could look like that. Or you could put the Y on the other side by itself. Whichever one you want is cool. Is cool. It's cool. Uh, long story short, this is where it's going to take us. If you ask me, this is the more complicated 
silly, unnecessary way. So no need to do all this. As long as you understand that when we see an X equals, we get vertical lines. Cool. All right, guys, go ahead and graph this sucker and don't spend too much brain power on it. Example number five. Ooh, I love this one. All right. What are we doing here? Graph by using intercept, by using intercepts. Okay, we need to remember once again, what are intercepts? Intercepts are found when our graph is touching the X or the Y axis, right? And remember that we have what's called the Y intercept. The Y intercept is where our X is zero. And we have some Y number. That's our Y intercept. Our X intercept is found where our Y number is zero, okay? Think about it. And uh, if I do some some random, sorry, we're on this graph right here. If I do a line that goes like this, right? Is This should be your x-intercept. This is your x-intercept. Uh, and that number right there is negative six comma zero. Not, not number, point. Notice, look, that's my x-intercept. X-intercept is a number comma zero. It will always be that. All right, cool. So what's happening here? What are we trying to do? We are going to graph... Um, we are going to be graphing, even though, even though we can use the same method, or you're probably wondering, no, we can't use the same method, Mr. C. We cannot use the same method because our equation looks different. I'm going to stop you right there. Don't do this in your book don't or in your paper. I'm sorry. Um, don't do it. You don't have to do it. Just watch it. I'm going to do it quick. I'm going to show you that I can take X to the other side. Cancel, cancel. Now I have negative 2Y equals uh, that negative X minus eight. They don't do anything because they're not the same thing. And then I can divide by negative two, uh, divide by negative two. And look now what you have. You now have Y on the other side by itself, just like how we had it before. This right here, essentially, um, I don't want to overcomplicate it, but this does become uh, one half times X uh, plus four. This is what it becomes. So it's the same thing that we did before. Same thing, you can still do it. Do I think that this problem right here kind of sucks and it's a little bit, a little tiny bit advanced for uh, doing what we did on the other side of the page? Yeah. So maybe it's great to show you this new uh, concept. How can we graph it using the X and Y intercepts? Well, this is how. What I'm going to ask my equation is the following. I am going to ask my equation for my Y intercept. How am I going to do that? Well, equation, dear equation, I am going to make your X be a zero. Check it out. Instead of writing an X, I am going to make it a zero because I know that much. I know that my Y intercept has an X of zero. So I'm telling my equation, hey, I know that your X is zero. So I'm going to plug that in to see what my Y is when my X is zero. And now look, what's zero minus two Y? Nothing. It just goes away. It's an insignificant number at this point. And now I have negative 2 times y equals to negative 8. Remember that to take this negative 2 to the other side, we need to divide by that same number. So we're going to be dividing by negative 2. Cancel, cancel. y equals a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 8 divided by 2 is floor. Boom. All right, so we got y equals 4. That right there is our y-intercept. Look. We told our equation, hey, I'm going to plug a zero for your x. Uh, so when I do that, give me your y-intercept. And that's what the equation did for us. Here it is. So I can go to my y-axis, and I know where this line is going to cross. This line is going to cross right here. And if you remember what I said before, you only need two points to make a line. Since I did this for my y-intercept, why can't I do it for the x-intercept? Right? Where where it's um, where my y is zero, I am going to make my y zero in this equation right here, right? So x minus two instead of y, I'm making it zero. So two times zero equals negative eight. What's two times zero? Two times zero just becomes zero, y'all. So if you need to see it, I'll show it to you. There it is. Do I need to? wonder what something minus zero is? No. Something minus zero is just stays at zero. Oh, I'm sorry. It stays at itself. And there it is. I asked the equation. I'm saying, hey, equation, I'm going to make your y a zero because I, I know that once I make your y zero, you're going to give me the x that goes with that y. And that is going to be the x-intercept. 
So that's going to be an X value of negative eight. Y'all ready for this? Bada bing, bada boom, bada bum, and we're done. That's it, we don't have to do anything, that's it. That's pretty much it um, in how to um, graphing it using the intercepts. So here's the original, x minus two y equals negative eight. Look at the intercepts, negative eight comma zero and zero comma four. Told you. So we can go ahead and put, um, let's go ahead and write it this way. Negative eight comma zero and zero comma four. All right, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pause this video, actually stop this video. You guys are responsible to doing this one right here, this check, and this one right here, we're gonna be doing together. All right, so just go ahead and do the check. That's it. See ya.